Okay. Guys, it is stream o'clock. Chris, hello from New Zealand. Hello. How are you guys doing down there? I, I think it's my, maybe if it's tomorrow. Is it Wednesday in New Zealand? I think it is. Guys, let's do this. Let's go live. Simon, let the fun begin. On your cue, Simon, I'm letting the fun begin. Hey, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Turn the music down a little bit. Duck that down just a snooge. How's everyone doing? Welcome to another Reason live stream. These are becoming something of a tradition when we drop a new feature, a new product, a new an upgrade, a new device, all those sort of things. It's almost become sort of expected. In fact, when we released Baseline Generator, but before we had announced this live stream, people were commenting on YouTube and saying, "Can't wait for the can't wait for the live stream." And so they're just now it's it's expected and for good reason, because they're super fun. They're fun for us to do, and hopefully they're fun for you guys to watch. Um, Alexander, sup from the Bay Area. Oh, hi neighbor. I'm Bay Area as well. Um, I'm one of the. I'm I'm the. I'm on the outside lands, if I can use a uh, Bay Area reference. I'm on the outside lands of the Reason Studios world. Everybody else, for the most part, is over in Stockholm. We got a couple other people, Australia, Los Angeles, but. Um, Anyway, well, it looks like everything's working. I'm keeping an eye on the comments here just to make sure as we kind of get going here that people are hearing things, they're seeing things, and I'm seeing a lot of hellos. Hello from Massachusetts. Um, and uh, we got some people asking, how am I? I'm, I'm quite good. Thank you very much. Um, here, I'll pop that one up. There you go. I, I've, hello, Ryan. Deep trance. Hey, how's it going? Um, greetings from Ireland. There we go. Okay, so everybody is uh, making their way. I'm glad, you know, we it's always such a moving target to try and find the right time of day to do these. And we've sort of hit upon this time. And I'm sure some of you watching are going like the right time of day. It's four in the morning in insert country here. But, um, you know, for, for the most part, this seems to kind of hit the right targets. You know, maybe you're having dinner and watching this over in Europe. Maybe you're having brunch here in California. Maybe you're slacking off at work after your lunch break in uh, New York or you're having breakfast in Hawaii. It seems to kind of hit the right targets. So um, so listen, we are here to talk about uh, a new player that dropped. Uh, was it last week? It was only last week. It wasn't even a week ago. It feels like a long time. And you know why it feels like a long time ago? Because I've been seeing so much discussion about baseline generator just in the last four days it really seems to have struck a nerve with people in a in a cool way and i think when i saw the first demo for it i my, my first comment was this is going to be useful for a lot of people i was really excited about it myself included i you know i talk about this i, I released a tutorial video and i say that like you know i'm not immune from struggling with baselines myself you know it's a, it can be a kind of tricky thing to get right and this player has just really leveled up, I think, what I do, but also I think of a lot of other people, and I'm seeing what they're doing. And people have been putting out videos on YouTube, and there's been clips on uh, Instagram and stories and all sorts of stuff we've been seeing. And it's just been this flurry of activity that's been really cool, really fun to see. And we're going to dig into it uh, even further today. In fact, I have, you know, sometimes it'll be me and Matthias. This time we've gone for a threesome because we really have, uh, I mean, I... I, may, I might overhype him, but I I don't think so. He might humbly underhype himself. Um, that I would call him the brains behind baseline generator, uh, the the inspiration behind it, and really uh, one of the key drivers that made it as cool as it is. So we're going to talk to him, and we're going to bring him on right now. This is Ludwig Carlson. Ludwig, say hello to the internet. Hey. <laughs> have I have I overhyped you or underhyped you? Have I gotten my is it Goldilocks just right? I think you're, uh, yeah, okay. I've, I've been deeply involved. You in have. The baseline generator. Thank you. So, this so is that is very unSwedish of you to to uh, go. You know what? Actually, yeah, I have been very involved in this. That's uh, and it's correct. You you really have been uh, the key driver. So much so that when I've gone to Matthias uh, early on during the development, when I went to Matthias and I had questions, he go like, ask ask Ludwig. I don't. I mean, I he knows better than me all this stuff. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about. Baseline generator. I want to. We're obviously going to show baseline generator, give people some tips and some tricks. But I, I think it's probably worth 
uh, taking a step all the way back to the why of Baseline Generator. Why did this happen? And uh, why as a player, you know, and, and sort of just where it all came from, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, the decision always comes from Matthias, doesn't it? But, but in some way. But, but I mean, players, we felt we had... First of all, we, we really like doing players because players are... You know, you get very close to the music with the player. Uh, you, kind of, you can really do some difference to the actual notes coming out, and that's, that's fun. It's fun to, and also we kind of, we like the thing, you know, creating, giving inspiration and making, you know, give, creating new ideas. That's, that's kind of one of the key things we, we like to do, and players are excellent for that. But we felt, I mean, we already have, what is it, two, at least two drum players, yes. right? right. Beat map and drum sequence, and we have the the the, the poly step, which is like more like for chords and stuff like that. We have an arpeggiator, and we have a pattern mutator, which is like you could probably do bass lines with it, but it doesn't really help you do that. It's you sort of have to bring the bass line to the player, and then it, right, then it'll take exactly. it further, right? Yeah. We didn't have something specifically for bass, so that was kind of the starting point. Plus the fact that we knew that I mean, bass, it's it, it's not always easy. To, right to do bass so it's a good thing to to look into what i love about these players when whenever you guys so when in recent i think was it nine nine i think that we introduced players right reason 9.0 yeah, and um I think so, yes when we did it we had introduced three players originally scales and chords dual arpeggio and note echo yep and i in my limited non-product designer mind was like great we got it all covered. We did it, guys. We're <laughs> perfect. That's and just the beginning. It's just the beginning. And then, so every time one comes out, I'll go like, oh, yeah, drum sequencer. Oh, that's actually, that is a super handy. Okay, well, now we got it. Cool. Cross players off the list. We've done it. And we're good to go. We got the whole collection. And then Pattern Mutator comes out and I go, oh, right, of course. Of course you want to do that. And so this was another one. It was just like a massive blind spot. As soon as you guys said it, I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Of course, we, we, we should have a baseline player, and um, and I, I hope hopefully it's as for people out there. It's, it, these are as surprising. I think there's something about them that's not just maybe the obvious. Oh, we need something that generates baselines, but actually, really your specialty. And I think partially, if I I hate to toot our own horn here, but I do think I'm going to say this as a as a reason user of many years, not as a, as a reason studios guy. Um, I have always been impressed with the design decisions that you guys have been making for years, so far before my tenure began with the company. And this is another one of those things where it's like, of course you can make bass lines, but to do it in the right way and the way that you came up with, the solution you came up with, I think is really, really elegant. And uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about that. What, how did it, how do you approach, you had the idea we need to help people make bass lines, but where do you, what, what's your next yeah, well, step? Well, we had a few, few like requirements that we came up with. We, we didn't want it to be random, for example, because like, you know, like quad note generator, it generates random stuff. It, it won't sound the same the next time you go back to it, but for a baseline, you really, you really, you really want it to sound the same. You set it and, and then it should stay that way so that it couldn't be randomly generated. Also, if you do random stuff, you can get interesting things, but you typically don't get Baselines. Baselines are not random, really. They are. Right. You know, they have might have a strong root note, might have a strong downbeat, and some. Yeah, there's a kind of form to baselines, which there might be many forms, but there are lots and lots of note sequences that won't work very well for right. baselines. This is a classic so thing I know yeah. as, as a guitarist. Um, there's mm -hmm. a sort of truism that bassists always think, which is that bassists will say all guitarists think they can play bass because it's like. It's you know it's similar and you know it's got frets and I can use a pick and I can you know it's the same yeah. tuning it's just only four strings I can do that but to think like a bassist and and bass lines are actually a whole unique thing unto themselves they're not I mean they can be melodic but they're not melodies and right. they can be you know they can be chordal but they're not chord progressions you know they they are their own thing sure exactly they, to me a good bass line kind of has a direction you know it, it travels and it kind of pushes forward in some way there are a lot of bass lines that are that don't do that but i don't find them very interesting you see what i mean by because and, and that brings me to you know let me back up a little bit because yeah. we wanted to find a way to, to kind of yeah 
we couldn't actually just do it parametrically from we couldn't come up with rules that create baselines out of nothing we could probably but our, the results weren't very good so we didn't do that so we found out okay we want to start with existing baselines we're going to do some some stuff and then we're going to kind of mutate them or let the user change them or mix them or in some way right uh, make them their own so you you don't you don't you don't want to get the feeling that you kind of you don't know using a loop player or something like that right you uh, there's a certain element um you know when someone i remember there someone making this comparison once to certain music making tools where they said that um it, if you go back 50 years in photography taking a photo was a a fairly complicated process you had to understand the relationship between the lens and the light that's coming in and the, the amount of silver particles on your film that you were shooting on and how long to expose that relative to its sensitivity and how changes on the camera would affect f focus settings like there was a lot to it that you were doing then the instamatic camera came out and you could point at something click a button and it figured out the correct all of that it figured it out and just took your picture and what happened when you did that, in a lot of ways, a lot of the complexity was removed. But what wasn't removed was the sense of ownership that you got in that I took this photo. This is my photograph. I, you know, people that take photos on their phone now, they don't go like, oh, well, the camera did all the work. I mean, the phone did all the work. I didn't, you know, I just pointed right. at the lens, right? They still take the artistic ownership of what they have created. And in a similar way, I think the players like this one, and there's some others out there too as well, Beatmap being one of those too, has that same relationship where it's yes it's removing complexity but it's still retaining the artistry and the ownership of what you do with it so that when you're done you don't feel like you didn't just load up a midi loop and go like okay that's my baseline you can actually really craft it exactly there's, it's I mean, clever i was gonna ask yeah, hopefully. you there's a there's a picture so i've got a couple of pictures i wanted to to chat with you about this yeah. um i have some of those early we put these up on the blog and so i i brought them up here right. So we've got this early iteration referred to as the base face. face. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about base face? And was this, was this the first design test? Uh, I mean, this is not a proper design. This is just like a sketch I did. But but we did prototypes of it of that basically. Um, the thing here is that we kind of tried to split the bass lines into uh, rhythm and pitch. So you could have independent control over the rhythm and which pitches were playing with some kind of XY thing, you see, pattern and mask. We used to kind of gate mask that was kind right, of, okay. I don't know, kind of deciding where in the pattern should I should my notes play and where should they be silent and so on. Uh, it didn't work. It sucked pretty much. It, no, it didn't suck, but it, it turned out only a few combinations seemed to work. Oh. So, so uh, we left, we, we abandoned that idea because the thing is, you don't want weird pitches all over the place, and you, it, it, it didn't really, it didn't really gel. How do you know thing, when you're in this process? How do you know yeah. when, like, how do you not get pulled into that sunk cost fallacy of like, we've been working on this design for two weeks and it's not there yet, do we, are we just a week away from seeing the success of this design or when do we scrap it and, and go at it with a different approach? Yeah, um, but it, it depends, I, I would say. I mean, it depends on how, how hurry, we, we, what, what kind of state of hurry we are in and, and so on. And, what, and also how far, I mean, I, will, I had a feeling that we were on the right track, so worked on. We had some good results, but we, just this particular you know, this, this combination of rhythm and pitch that didn't really work. And all the, that thing you saw under the, the two XY pads, that was an early idea of mine, which didn't really, it wasn't really necessary. It was a way to, yeah, that weird kind of display down there with the repeat like the, steps. The chromosome display or, oh, the, yeah, the repeat Yeah, um, that just, so that, that was a way to kind of create patterns that repeated but was slightly different each you know, every every second time or something like that, but it it wasn't necessary I to see. remove that. So so um, no, well, well, luckily we had the time to kind of go back to the drawing board and think a little bit more about. And this. so your your second uh, iteration, if you want to call it, or sort of milestone iteration, um, yeah. still this is still a sketch wireframe, right? This isn't a 
Absolutely. A device Our built. graphic designer Andy is not involved in these <laughs> weird attempts. I just have to say to defend him. I mean, he does the, the actual things, and then, and also, of course, a lot of the design, the actual uh, graphic user interface design, that that's him because he's he's very very experienced. He's basically done every single uh, recent studios device. Right. I would say almost. Almost all right. Yeah. Yeah, so this is much closer because we have come up with the beat and the on beat and off beat. It says beat here, but it's the same thing. Sure. We don't have that diamond shape, but there are just two big knobs for them instead. But it does the same thing, basically. And we also came up with having some kind of sequence of display separating the pitch curve and the, the notes. Right, uh, right. Actually, this is pretty This is pretty close to what we have. There are some things that right. are this would, if we If we weren't so lucky as to have Andy this could be a functional version as we know mm -hmm. it of of baseline generator so exactly it's uh everybody right. should send him uh flowers and chocolate for making our reason rack that yes. much prettier <laughs> I mean I mean we we are continuously when we do this we we are continuously kind of developing and, and discussing and bringing things to the table and, and uh, so it's, it's Matthias and Andy and I and also Niklas Backlund of Robotic Bean who's been at that point, he was already involved. But I mm. just have to stress one thing, because at an early stage, it's pretty pretty fun, because we have the, the new combinator, the updated combinator from Reason 12. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. I mean, I use it for prototyping. I've actually, I did the prototypes in as combinator patches early on to uh, use, <laughs> using Pattern Mutator as a, as a built-in sequencer, actually, to oh. just... Try so you, stuff you fed out. the baselines into pattern mutator. You, like you yeah, put I them recorded in baselines into pattern mutator and then I made a combinators out of that and, and just tried all the combinations and how things worked. Uh -huh, so before we did actual rack extensions, we just did combinator patches. Interesting. I, they couldn't do everything, of, of course, but it could, you could get a sense of what, what worked and what didn't. Right, right. Well, so should we, maybe we should pop the actual device up uh, on our screen here and, and kind of... Right. Instead of looking at wireframes and sketches, um, maybe we'll actually look at the the real baseline generator. Talk a little bit about what it is. Now, a lot of people yeah. will have seen our tutorial video that we put out last Thursday, but not everybody will. So maybe we'll kind of give people a quick, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a once over as to what it is, and then we'll we'll start digging into um, exactly some some extra fun things we can do with it. So. It's cold out here, says Matthias. For, it's cold. For oh, oh, oh! Is he, is he is he wanting in on the fun? Yes, he is. <laughs> it's cold oh, out here. All right, Matthias. All right, all right. You want to come? You want to say hello? I'm bringing you on for a second. Ludwig, get your screen up uh, while I talk sure. to Matthias Let real quick. Let me in. <laughs> I was I was hanging out with you Ludwig. You were having too much fun. You're, I, I, was I, could, I could just hang out it with was Ludwig. Super fun, Matthias. We had so, such such yeah. fantastic time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, fine. Well, now, now you're here. What do you got to say? What you, what you got? You got something you need to add? I got got nothing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's look at baseline generator. Let's I've been at, looking at questions right. in the chat, and That's right. I, uh, there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Ludwig, before I uh, bring you uh, bring your screen on, I'm noticing off to the side that you you want to share uh, just reason only because you've got the whole. Uh, your whole monitor going, and when, if I switch over to it now, we're gonna get sucked into a feedback vortex of visuals. I think I only have reason. Sorry. I, I do guess not I believe try. you do. I think I do. Uh, uh, let's me try again. My <laughs> screen says otherwise. All right. There it no, is. Then. There, there you go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> now, now it's there. Okay. <laughs> so uh, here, I'm gonna pop this up on the screen here. Okay. So. I, I'm going to leave it to you to try to describe this a little bit, but maybe just kind of give people the the, the need to know quick once over of really what baseline generator is, how it works, and what's kind of happening, maybe behind the scenes, so they understand kind of the okay, magic. Okay, so of this. see you in two hours then. No, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm kidding. Okay, so um, right, I just started by adding a, a monotone bass synthesizer, which would sound something like this. Matthias, uh, mute your mic. You're typing. See, this is what happens when you come on too early. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. So I just I'll, added I'll just, a, I'll just walk out of here. No, no. Just mute your no, mic. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just added the baseline generator here. Okay, cool. And 
This loads like the, the default patch, which sounds like this, just so you can hear it. But if we skip the default patch and go back to the very... Yeah, you're just going to reset the device like this. Then we're going back to a very, very basic and simple pattern, which would sound something like this. And you right away can notice that down here we have green and blue notes or dots or whatever you should call them. They are actually notes. And the green ones are reflected up here. It says on beat and the blue ones are off beat. And this is kind of the key to how, how, we, how we kind of, you know, how you reconstruct bass lines out of whatever is in here. So the on beat, that means things that are on the eighth notes, like even stuff. I can, we can turn down the velocity and turn off, off off beat all the way. So you can just, just hear the. It's a good trick to know actually, that you can turn down velocity and they're off. Right. Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't picked up on that. It says off here, right? So cause. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, just. Get new I never learned to read Ludwig. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> You've just Shame outed me. <laughs> anyway, so uh, as you might have heard over the insane laughters, we that was very straightforward. Just eighth notes, no syncopes. No, is that a word? Syncopes? It's, it, it is in Sweden. Yeah, it's no a, syncopated notes. Syncopes, syncopes. Uh, maybe Syncope. people out there that are more uh, all right theory minded can tell Syncope us. Syncope in Swedish. Anyway, so. Uh, if we instead turn off the the on beat, we only listen to the off beat. Those are the notes that sit in between uh, on the like off sixteenth notes. Yeah, this is gonna sound really weird because you only hear those weird. Right. It's not really but, useful as on its own. But am I am I but correct together. in saying that these are the notes? They really kind of give a bass line kind of its interest, its uh, its feel. Yeah, at least if you want it to be like funky or or, or right. driving. The, the, I talked about direction earlier, the, the way a bass line kind of drives forward and, and also kind of pushes against the beat. Because the beat is fairly straight here, as you hear. Right. It's really, really simple. You know what I thought? As of, it often is. I think that's When I was doing the say, tutorial, though. I thought about um, the uh, Another One Bites the Dust bass line is this interesting thing where it's... Half of it is on the beat and half of it's off the beat. So you got da da dun 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 da dun 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 da dun like that that's all playing off these right. upbeats. And it's it's it becomes interesting because you realize it's the back half that makes that interesting. Yeah. If it was just da da dun 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 and vice versa. If you would remove the proper like dun 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 it would lose its anchor. Uh, right. Really, right. Exactly. We'll see this in many patterns actually, with the, with both me and the play a lot of music, of course. I play a bit of bass, and Luther plays bass with all the instruments he can get his hands on, I, I think. And that was a, a key thing, that like a, a good bass line, they, they tend to kind of have an important, like, this beat matters, right? The right. first beat matters. And, and this is a thing that bass players in do, in, not, not instinctively necessarily, but they do it, it's based on years of experience. And I think that's what's interesting about the lines that are fed into bass line generator as a starting point, were fed from Ludwig your experience. I mean, it, they're they're bass lines that you play. Yeah, we, we we had we had some outside help as well, but but yeah, we we, we kind they're of hum, but they're human bass lines. They're not right. they're not algorithmic right. and they're not random and they are based on right. the experience of uh, bass players who understand that on and off relationship. Yeah, and the reason for that actually is is because we found out that that worked best, even though you kind of split. Yeah. Let's say we, we record a bass line that sounds something. There's a, a mix of on beat and off beat note, and then we split that and make make two separate one on beat and one off beat pattern. And they might not end up on the same number here. They might sit in different places on these scales because they are kind of sorted on on how dense and how many notes there. I'll be coming there. But the, the interesting thing is that since they were made together and they actually started out as a proper We'll play the bass line, they kind of work for some reason. Uh, I, mm. I wouldn't have been able to do that just by kind of guessing and, and plotting right. and drawing notes. That's what killed all the, all the kind of random generation ideas too, because there were too many like 
instinctive little rules and, and baseline things right. that just right. randomly generate them, you notes. just play them. It's like yeah, when, I'm, when, them, I'm, exactly. when I'm trying to learn Swedish and I ask someone a grammar rule, go, how do you know it's this and not that? It's like, you right. just know. You, I, don't, I don't know mm-hmm. how to tell you. I just, you know. Um, yeah. It's these things you learn as, you, as you're going. And of course, that, that, that's all based, in this case, I mean, on, on listening to a lot of music yeah. over the yeah. years. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> and and playing, like playing in bands. It's not something you've, new here. You've certainly played yeah. in your fair share of, of bands, and, and particularly with a certain emphasis on kind of these feel-based and funk-based type of yeah. and jazz as well, you know. Um, really, yeah. things that have a central. It's been known to happen. <laughs> it's been known to happen. I'm going to just. I'm gonna it's been s- known to funk. I'm going to fly through a couple of comments here. Um, just, I want to see, make sure. I'm, oh, yeah. So, um, RH was asking, is it any good for drum and bass? Um, that's a. I think that uh, very much depends on the type of drum and bass that you do. I mean, the traditional kind of, you know, old school drum and bass that I tend to like, they often just have long notes, right? And it's really the bass sound that does it. It's yeah, the sound right. bass that just goes through the entire track. Yeah. Oh, I and see. So there's a yeah, the, the DMB drone bass here. And there's also another exactly. one called Rumble in the Jungle High BPM, which is something... I won't be so, able to kind of showcase it now because I don't have the proper yeah. like rhythm yeah. loops or whatever. Right, but, right, right. But right. I think it can definitely do those. But in many cases, it, I mean, to be perfectly honest, sometimes you don't need that. We we talked a right. lot in the beginning about what baseline generator is supposed to do. Right. And two things we kind of removed from the equation was uh, bass that was simply functional. So bass that simply tried to follow along with the chords and the structure of your song. Uh, you know, and playing no the root rhythm. note of the chord. Yeah, exactly. No, the rhythm yeah, if you're just really holding rhythm. a note for the entire measure on the root note of the chord. Yeah. Like you don't need a player yeah, to do that. Have for like eighth note, bum 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 bum. Right. Bum, hey, that's bum, my that's my yeah. style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then then you don't really need our help. I think it's more like okay, let's let's figure out the chord stuff. I beg right? to differ. And, I did, I didn't need your help. I just didn't know I needed <laughs> it. <laughs> Fair enough. And it can. It's a bass generator on on purpose. Try to not not be that really right i don't right. think it can do the the very basic like pop com, pop rhythm you know boom 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 i don't like something from the 60s or something i, I don't yeah. i don't think we can maybe it can of course it can i, I mean you can you can it. clearly it, draw in the notes yeah but you can <laughs> in those notes but you, right you but you then you're just it. using any other sequence right uh, but but that's really important actually so based on generator was kind of made for you know music and, and genres where the baseline was more or less prominent and, and important. Right. And that's still a wide range. I see a lot of people saying like uh, techno and, and acid baselines, which honestly most of the raw material was the complete opposite direction. It was a lot of, of funk and soul and, and right. you know, those kinds of baselines. A which you'd be surprised, of course, tend to be quite similar actually. Uh, Gary in the yeah, comments says it's ages. it's great for DMB. So Gary uh mm. assume has made some DMB with it, says it's great for DMB. Also, um another just question to to make sure we're clear on this. Evan says this baseline generation is synced with tempo? Yes it is. Yes. Um and, and you can you can hear when Ludwig actually uh, I keep interrupting us from actually playing, but when he does play, <laughs> um there's a little drum beat there that's that's happening um courtesy of reason as well and, and everything is synced up with tempo, absolutely. <laughs> I see yeah. Swedish hot synth quintet is in the comments asking if it's good for stuff from the twenties. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. If you not. didn't know, that's uh, Ludde's analog synth orchestra. <laughs> yeah, we've been playing vintage jazz on vintage oh, really? synthesizers since 1998. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so let's get back to the yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sure. So I started with. Yeah, let, let me start over. So I, I'm just going to start from this very, 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 very sparse. Now, a way I like to use this, I can, of course, just do it like this and drag in the diamond. But maybe if you want to really find something you, you like, you might want to try to do one thing at a time. Start with the on beat and see where, where that takes you. So like this. So maybe I'm going to... interesting uh, I'm gonna take that one and then I'm gonna kind of move this, do the same thing with the off beat here and see what we can mm. no no yeah it was okay it's effective in its own way okay that that's something at least so now at that point I can start maybe 
doing stuff with velocity and note lengths like I'm going to zoom in just so people realize what you're doing there. So the velocity. Oh, yeah, wait, have, were those changing? Were you changing the knob or were you changing them direct in the sequencer? Oh, you're changing the knob I was changing the, the knob. Yeah. I so see. So it's just like a velocity scale control for the on yeah. beat and for the off beat. And, and that's I a global, is that a global that, setting for all on beat and yeah, all? Yeah, it scales, it scales what, whatever is in the actual. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. So if you've got baseline. two different green notes, but different velocities, they'll go up but they'll go relative to each other. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Thank because the, the, the baseline, the, the patterns that are in there have velocity information, so it's not like yeah. they have nothing, but uh, no. you scale it up and down. So <laughs> and you can actually see that because you see this, this black, the bigger the black dot is, the, the higher the velocity. So this last note is pretty, it's pretty intense. Oh, you can, I think right. you can hear that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I can do the change the note length a little bit as well. Okay, it works. Actually, I'm curious what happens if I raise this pattern length, the number of steps, to 64 instead, which is the maximum. Not much. <laughs> oh, it went down at the end. So, is it that okay. these patterns were written as 64? Length yes. patterns, and then okay. Yes. So there, there, they there may if you see a pattern and it's thirty-two, there may be something behind the below the fold or behind the curtain or whatever you want to say. Right, about. but you might want to go down even further. Right. Related to that, I just I'll throw the question at you because I've seen it come up in the comments a couple of times. People are asking, um, are, are there? Do we? Do you think that it'll ever go to less than sixteen? Some people seem to want eight steps only, and that's their. Yeah. Whole world. Well, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, that in retrospect we should have done that, and maybe that will come as well. Uh, I, I, I agree. We had a, we had a discussion about that, and we had kind of different opinions. Let's leave yeah. it at that. But <laughs> being the resident techno sequencer, I was in no, it's not. Of it's less. not really about that. It, it was just like I felt, coming from my perspective, the the bass lines didn't kind of. It didn't really become bass lines until. You yeah. had a, a bar there's, of it. There's one thing. Yeah, I'll show a bit of that later when when I do mm -hmm. some demoing. But you'll you'll find actually that if you turn down the length to say eight instead, mm -hmm. you're you're not left with much. Like right. these bass lines are written as as like you said as bass lines with a, a real focus on the root note and the right. octaves and the kind of fifth and seventh. And you'll find that you'll get very very kind of similar starting points, for example, if you go down to eight. I would almost think that by the time lines. you're at eight, you could be doing that in pattern mutator and sort of rolling your own without too much effort. But Yeah, but kind of, especially when you go down to four or five. And right, and right, right. And stuff. But, um, but there's still definitely a cool thing. A little housekeeping here. Uh, one question, uh, is this only available with Reason Plus? The answer is no. It's uh, available in our shop as well as an add-on for Reason. And that's true of Reason 10.5 and up, right? Am I correct in my... Uh, I think point. it's 10.2. 10.2, 10. Yes. 10. thank you. That's what, that's I think the, it's 10.1. 10.1. Oh, oh, damn it. It's like an auction. I Do I hear 10.0? 10.0. Go on. Once, go on once. <laughs> 10.1. Okay. So let me uh, show you one more thing before, if it was okay. Yeah, could or I? Yeah, let me just, some... There's another great question that yeah. came in I want to oh, answer. Somebody asked about the velocity, which we didn't, we sort of took for granted that everybody understands what's happening there. They said, is the velocity yeah. like bending the tone? And um, okay. no, uh, but it's patch dependent right what the way velocity impacts a sound is so velocity yeah, just means like, the, the well go ahead you you're the expert yeah it's like the all, every midi note has a velocity value and that kind of originally it's like em emulates how hard you were playing on a piano or something so and that what what that does that that all that depends on the instrument you're playing and the settings there so you can have a a, a note with low velocity and that typically can sound a little bit weaker or or darker in if the filter changes with velocity, as in this case, or it could uh, do something else, or it could sometimes it doesn't do anything at all because the the, the instrument isn't set up that way. I can actually show you. Let let me just play this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I turn off velocity like this, all notes will sound the same now. I can turn up the velocity here instead. So. Things got quieter now because now I decided to let the velocity affect the level, the amplifier. The, 
Oh, I see. Amplitude. And I don't want that. I want my bass to be loud and strong, but I want it to change tone character depending on how hard I play a little bit. I'm going to show you more about the oscillate, but, okay. but uh, it's something. You can basically say that higher velocity is typically more intense sound. Yeah, right. In right. Some way. And to his I think question, you'll, you'll it, find in just the, well designed patches, it's not just leveled and it will have, something more will happen, maybe the filter. Right. The sound that he heard as bending the note as he described it was the filter relationship that sort of gave this, the sound a little bounce to it when it from yep. the, the filter changing. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay, yep. carry on. All right, so now I felt, okay, this is okay, but I want to take it further and see what happens. And we got something called the variators. Those are probably the, the hardest to, to understand at, in the beginning, but it's basically a way to use other numbers in the same bass line. Now I have number 8 here and number 26. The on beat is 8 and the off beat is 26. All well and good, but let's say that I want in the second half of this pattern, I want to go to another on-beat pattern. And I can do that by, first of all, selecting a variator shape that tells me that, okay, the second half of the pattern, I'm going to do some, I'm going to change. I'm going to change to another number. And then I'm going to turn it up here. And you can see up here that we're actually moving a kind of a range. If I go down instead, I will go to the other direction like this. Uh, but, and that basically means that after half the pattern, I will select another. It, it will select another on beat for me. So now it will sound completely different in the second half of the pattern. So like even this. though we're seeing in the diamond, I'm sorry, even though we're mm -hmm. seeing 826 representing the diamond, what we're kind of going to be hearing is more 826 yeah, and value. maybe 1526 or whatever the number ends up being, right? Right, exactly. Okay. So, so now we're, we're still on the number eight and now... It, That kind of turned out like two different bass lines strung together. That might not be what we want. We can also select that we only want to vary the very the, the last quarter of the of the pattern. I'm going to check something. Oops, sorry, my bad. No, no, I kind of keep missing here. Oh, oh. I'm just being stupid as well. <laughs> sorry. Oh. A little upwards motion. A little bit disco at the end. But then I'm not very happy about this thing at the end, so I'm going to do some variation here as well. Add a variator shape for the offbeat. Uh, this is a ramp, so it's going to continuously change from, from, the half of, from the second half of the pattern. I'm going to, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go... Maybe like this looked interesting. Okay, you can go on like this until you find something fun. There are no guarantees. Sometimes you find stuff that are not so inspiring, of course, but then the nice thing is that you can just, I mean, that, that's kind of the point here. Uh, I'm not really happy about that. You can also do, uh, have variator shapes that uh, do two changes during the course of the pattern. Mm. That's like, where the, the, the f oh, okay, the, 25 to 50 percent mark and then the 75 to 100 right so in, the, in this case it would do um, let's take that one instead this will kind of do change this part and then this part so uh, it kind of it, it it does changes two two times over the pattern and <laughs> this is going it's so hard to explain in words <laughs> but i think if you just yeah. play around with it a little bit it, it's I think what you need to think about is really that uh, it changes uh, the pattern to another pattern by fusing different ones, right? And they generally do that at the end of the pattern. Uh, someone asked in the comments before, if, oh, why can't I do that in the beginning of the pattern? Mm -hmm. you, you kind of can because it's inverted too, right? You can go to the more yeah. busy thing at the top and then turn the amount but down. Sure, so oh. sure. We, could, we could absolutely add shapes that do stuff in the beginning of the pattern. The yeah. thing is that this comes from a, a, a how you think, at least how I think about bass lines, that you kind of, as you said, Matthias, you anchor them in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You kind of anchor them and then you vary them at the end. So that's why they are shaped this way. That's yeah, just the Bootsy model. Very but, but Matthias yeah, does offer exactly. a, a, 
that's something I hadn't thought of, so I'm just going to highlight it because that is for people that, for whatever reason, want to have maybe a busy variation at the top half and a simple variation at the um, a, a, a biter dusts another one. Like you know, I'm, <laughs> right? I'm flipping the word. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, for people that want to do that, they they could set a high number on their default sure. setting and then actually dial back the amount knob for right. more simple exactly. things. Yeah, which which will lead to yeah more busy in the in the beginning, less busy in the end. Right. Uh, which is which sometimes is is really cool. I I think it comes it comes to a point when you want to do a very very specific thing. Eventually, you want to ah, but I I just kind of oh, if the beginning was more like this, right. that's when you actually go into the note display and, and you know remove notes and add notes right and, right and repitch them. Right. And that's why we added it too. I think bass lines much more than than. Uh, what what uh, bitmap did really needed to have a sequencer for the kind of define control the like it's it's almost exactly how I want it and I want to put my own touch and I want to just uh, this little note right right mm-hmm. uh, a question from uh, Evan as he's asked um, any patterns for club music I think we're going to be hearing some stuff you you'll hear quite a few <laughs> yeah yeah or EDM style yeah, it says yeah I think so. um, mm. And, and again, I want to but, reiterate that I think what we found out when we when we started using this and trying the patterns is that the patterns for for club and EDM and funk and house and and neo soul and whatever they weren't actually that different. They were often no. the sounds that were different or or mm. the length. And or the I mean, I was actually surprised because if you took like some funky, a little bit housey something something pattern. And then you turn the tempo down to 80 something, and then you kind of just moved up the release on your bass synth, and then it worked pretty well as a, like a hip hop or something, slow funk. It was the same, basically. It, yeah. No big difference. And you put right. an 808 right. bass sound to it or something. There are some yeah, that kind of surprised me a little bit. There are some comments from some people um, that are uh, requesting new bass sounds, so maybe this is a, a good transitional point. Um, <laughs> For us, the test base has uh, yeah. test base has worn work. out its welcome. Test base has served as well. I actually have <laughs> one thing I would like to show you if you if you're okay with it because yeah. I tried to do some electric bass sound. I just you took the recent to electric oh, bass wait, are you, instrument. You'll need to hang on a second. If no, you're switching windows, you'll need to uh, oh, yeah. stop and reshare with a new window. That's hello that's everyone. Good. Big screen. <laughs> big screen. We're on the big screen now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no worries. I'll just check in um, with the. Uh, comments so related to that somebody's asking for electric bass i think we're going to get there because people have asked about um you know in my tutorial i use sort of synth basses and so people were asking in the comments on that video how does it do when it's uh dealing with electric bass so um okay cool we are with you now uh we're looking at oh there you go right on cue electric bass right yeah, happily so this is, it even says electric bass <laughs> this is electric bass reason electric bass uh, the uh, classic instrument uh, so it sounds something like this I just selected 1817 which turned out pretty okay so some kind of I don't know slightly funky but and now I try to do the variator thing I selected variator shapes like this and I I have actually preset these so I wouldn't have to look for them So now things are sort of happening a little bit. But even better, I found that if I could turn up the note range, I haven't talked about that. Note range basically expands the range from the root note and up, or kind of brings it all together closer to the root note. Right. So And you can see it's this, not very scientific. It's it's literally just further away or closer. <laughs> yeah, but it stays in some kind of musically reasonable intervals at least so it's yeah, not exactly. going to sound all weird but but it might sound wrong in another way like this oh like, <laughs> you don't really like want this video game music this very very happy <laughs> notes like that yeah I, <laughs> you don't want that don't do you? I don't that was great that. <laughs> and that's why we have this minorness thing which basically decides that oh you can't have oh you can't have the, mi- the the major seventh that will be the, become the minor seventh and you can't have 
the major third, that will become the minor, and so on, and the sixth, and the second. So I, this will be fair enough. Can you, you right. can actually see the nose moving there, you're right? That, and Peter's Thanks. asking, just uh, he's saying, what is the small grill under the diamond? That is exactly what we're talking about. I'm going to zoom into a disgusting resolution here. Yeah, but this, um, this is a, yeah, this is, you cannot actually do anything. It, it sort of illustrates what's happening with both with note range, right. in a way, it, and with the minorness, because as you see, some some intervals are kind of forced to their lower version. So it's a there. it's a feedback thing, just a, like a visual feedback, just to let you know. Yes, you yeah, have changed, and that's. I like to say that it's also because it looks a little bit interesting and cool. It, this is a an Andy thing and i like it a lot yeah but 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 it doesn't really i mean it it might help you to see what's going on a little bit but you're not you it's not but something where you click and reroute those no, dots or no, anything like that no right, right exactly so now it sounds like this which i thought found found pretty cool then. so this is the same no range is up but minorness is up Ooh, oh yep. wait let's, let's listen to that for a second i like that turnaround Exactly. That's some auto off. It's giving me the less clay pool vibes. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> so that's... And I have one more electric bass example, actually. I'm going to do this. Stop sharing again. Are you ready? Oh, I, I, I will be. I am ready. Okay. <laughs> I will be. And now I'm going to change the, <laughs> to this one. And... Here we go again. Right. Um, okay. Okay, cool. I'm going back to Cali. Okay, here we go. Right. This is, again, electric bass. It's the same sound, actually, without the auto wow But So now I'm going down to much lower tempo. Uh, let's see what was, what was the fun thing here. Yeah, I had some offbeat variated here as well. But this is a good example really of, this is like not club music, This is and it's not funk either, it's like just, it's just a bassist laying down a feel behind a band. I, I think it's a, just a good utilitarian bass yeah. line. And I want to show you two interesting things here. Uh, on the back, I just pressed tab for those of you who were surprised uh, to flip the rack around. And on the back, we have some CV outputs, as we usually have on our devices. CV is control voltage, meaning you can connect things to and from the baseline generator for various interesting results. I know that Matthias is going to talk a more, bit more about that later. But yes. So we have the, the gate and note CV outputs here. And you can use those to, to connect another device, if you like, to control two devices at the same time. So I did this, so just to get some, and I'm gonna bring up the level for this. So that's. Oh. Well, nice, in a way. Yeah, yeah. So now it, th this one plays both the electric bass and the algorithm. I'm getting but flashbacks to when I was like 11 or 12 and I got the uh, Roland, I think it was GR09 guitar synthesizer. And I could, I put a MIDI pickup on my guitar, and I was like, "This is great! I'm now I can play piano on my guitar." And then I tried it, and then I realized I hadn't yet asked the question: Should I play piano on my guitar? And the answer is no. <laughs> well, uh, the answer is uh, yes, could... right? But for bass, no. Actually, in, in all seriousness, for bass, it's actually an entirely different thing. The idea that you could layer synth stuff with bass, and real bass and synth bass, actually, is a classic, cool sound. So to be able to do that yeah. is actually fun. But let me instead connect it to this. I have a, like an NNXT sampler with a slap bass sound loaded. I'm trying and so I'm gonna... hard not to say the, the phrase, the old... Uh... <laughs> what is say... the phrase? You're going to make me say it's slap and the bass. Yeah, he he... <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't hold it he back. He said <laughs> it. I couldn't hold back. All right. All right. <laughs> but I'm going to move it. Instead of the regular gate up, I'm going to put it on the accent gate output. And the accent in this case means that it only sends out a gate signal whenever the velocity of a note is above 110. And the maximum is 127. So only the loud notes will trigger this one now. So I don't think there are any loud notes so far, but 
But here comes the opportunity to actually do some editing. I'm just going to drag up here on this. Yep. Oh, okay. So I get that. That's like the pop sort of sound of like right. not the slap, but it's the actual not, the pop. Yeah, it's got. It should be a, like a, a pop. I, it doesn't really sound perfect. Adam, Adam Dorn, what's that example. called? What's that thing you called with? Not the slap, but the other thing. It's the slap and the pop. Is it called a pop? The, okay. Well, the I'm, I'm asking our resident uh, slap expert in the comments over there. Well, it is a pull too. <laughs> Right, so that was one thing you could do at least. You can actually yeah, there's a there's a sneaky way to kind of trigger two things with one baseline generator dynamically. Right, right. exactly. That is interesting. That is really interesting. So and of course, what, not uh, just for slap bass. You could you could do that with, with anything, right? No. It could trigger a drum hit or a chord yeah. or anything. Yeah, I've been using it to tr to just trigger. Um, to raise the amount of reverb briefly, mm. like a re reverb mm. sound. So you get on the loud notes, you get a, like an extra spot reverb. You know, another bass sound. Uh, not not necessarily done as an accent thing, but maybe as an accent. I know a lot of things. A lot of times, uh, trap producers like to take their 808 bass lines and layer a kick on it, so every time you get a a kick, yeah, sort of transient on top mm -hmm. of your. I mean, it's, it's it's almost funny to say that you get a you get a kick on top of your 808 bass because like an 808 bass is based on a kick, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I um yeah. I think that's. I think you need to see something else now. Then okay. Adam Adam says. Okay. Oh wait, that was not the one. Adam says there is no one term for uh, what we just <laughs> talked about. So, uh, oh oh here we go. Wait, we got more info. A pull, a thump, a slap, etc. Okay, there we go. Most of us know can put a bomb, pause lap, up a boss, and so get a really Now, uh, just maybe the best possible timing. <laughs> now, you'll also probably hear a very excited cat greeting my girlfriend coming oh. home. So, I'm going to try to focus on now. the baseline generator. Okay, you start Are you sharing? ready okay. for me to Oh, I am, yeah. I am one step ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, you yeah. can pull your screen down. So, what, we're switching over. Matthias, are you, um, you got some stuff? I, I think I do. Yeah, I, I want to show some. Uh, some kind of using and abusing the baseline generator. Yeah, just so some kind of tidbits I, that you didn't cover in your uh, excellent tutorial. <laughs> this is something we talked about when, when you, the three of us were discussing this live stream and sort of tossing around thoughts and ideas of what we might talk about and show. And I, I have a vested interest in showing people ways to misuse. Uh, all re I always like showing people ways to misuse devices or maybe... Maybe maybe misuse is the wrong term, but sort of push what the obvious use is for a device into something else. And I, I think hopefully, Matthias, you're going to show us some of that stuff. Um, a little bit, yeah. So I'm now looking at your screen. Yes, you are. Uh, a little zoomed in part of my screen. So basically what I wanted to kind of show was some of the uh, CV connections in a in a different way than, than Ludwig did. Basically what they can just do to add something to your sound. Uh, I've, I've got some help here from the Compare CV Scope. Uh, oh, so... By this same person who's uh, helped us uh, do the baseline generator, Niklas Backlund. From uh, Robotic Bean. Uh, oh, yeah, Robotic Bean. Sorry, I mix up the, the names there. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is just using these outputs to control things on the synth. I'll remove them for now, so don't look at them. <laughs> and basically, this is the little bass line that I have going. Not supremely exciting, but the rhythm is pretty good. I like it, I like it, yeah. What I want is kind of to change up how the groove works uh, with the sound rather than the actual, uh, the actual notes. I think that's really important for many genres. Uh, so Rusty says, uh, some "Sorry, Rusty is saying uh, what I was referring to is off-label use." So I think that's correct, Rusty. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're do some off-label use. Yeah. So I've prepared some just CV inputs here to oscillator mix and stuff, but I'll remove these just so you can see from scratch what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna route these cables. I mean, you would route them directly to what you wanted to try, right? And go, oh, I want to control the oscillator mix, but just for the purpose of seeing what's going on, I'm gonna write uh, route them through the CV scope. So oh, so this is this is a, just a visualizer for us today, yep, not so a required device output 
here and then there. So what does this mean? Well, it means that now if I play this back, you can see this red scope line. You can follow it. Makes sense. Yeah, well, it, it mostly makes sense, but walk me through it like I'm an idiot <laughs> so, because what, what you're actually going, you're sending the tide gate output. Yeah, so this is just sending a gate. It's just uh, a gate. It's not actually sending yeah, note so information. Yeah, so it's a, it's a yeah, it's a signal that's high or low. Okay. Right? It's up or down. Okay. Uh, and that's being sent. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Luda, because I'm not exactly sure. But when uh, uh, there's a tied note uh, that that changes pitch. Yeah. So not when exactly. it's tied like this, but when it's tied from a pitch to another pitch. You right. can see I have that here and here and here and here. Uh, and that's great because suddenly you can add some accents when you do like a slide. It was added so that when two notes are changing, you can you know, turn on a slide thing or change something that does the turn on portamento. But I like to use it for just other things. Wait, but hang on. So, because I've seen a lot of comments of people asking if there, there was a slide function and you're saying this is your gateway to slide town well there, there are many things that are, like the most common gateway to slide is that most synths especially in recent have portamento auto and auto just means that if you have a tied note that changes pitch it will apply portamento i see so that is slide that right? is slide. And that's okay. generally in the instrument but, but anyway might what want i want to slide do to be more pronounced so that's yeah exactly so to open the things. filter when it slides yeah. oh, let's, I see. let's right. do that actually so I'll just take this to the filter frequency and I'll turn it down. Actually, I can do this on this thing instead. So now... It opens the filter when it slides. Which, you know, it doesn't do a lot of difference. What I like to do is kind of use it for something big. So I'm going to use it for oscillator mix, which just means it will go from I see. just hearing the first one here. Thank you for doing this at, at the rate of my learning, because I'm getting this yep. now. Okay. To this fifth. That's what I want to do. So now, whenever I do a slide, it actually changes to the fifth, the other oscillator. Which is a cool sound. Now, to me, this instantly has like moved into like, you know, the sort of like justice cross era bass lines. Yeah, there's a lot of that kind of mixing between sounds. Yeah, the, the mixing between the, the, the cutting. This example was a, a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take some more, like the accent gate out. Uh, Wolf Cry says, uh, he, this sort of, he says, did he turn it into an envelope follower? That's sort of what ended up, I mean, not really, but that, to the listener, that might be a similar sort of effect that you were getting when you had that hooked up to the filter, that there yeah. was a, a, a rhythmic filter action that sort of felt a bit yeah. envelopey, but it wasn't actually envelopey. I'm going to use the, the accent gate out that Ludwig just showed too, and I'm going to use that to control the noise level. So basically, whenever the velocity is really high, you can see some notes here, I'll turn up the noise. You can follow that on the blue trace. Ooh. So Maybe another kind mute, of... Mute, mute the drums. Mute the drums yeah, for a second. Yeah, uh, good point. So let's go back. So it becomes a little bit of an accent there. It right. doesn't have to be this pronounced. And then it's good to know that, uh, of course, we just we, we can have a lot of CV that makes sense and that is related to this, but we also have several proponents of random CV in the office, including myself and the visual designer Andy. Um, can, and luckily can, also I like Nicholas. Too. Can I throw a curve? We all like that. Can I throw a curveball at you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Briggs says needs distortion, so if we can if I can put in a request to okay. add some distortion at some point. I'll do some filter drive instead. Okay. You'll have to live with the filter drive, I don't want to go overboard. <laughs> okay. Uh, but basically baseline generator also uh, generates one random uh, CV signal that's the same length as the sequence both as a bipolar, so it goes both positive and negative, or unipolar. So I'm going to use those two, so the unipolar, and use that to control the FM level. And the, the, let's take the other one and do the filter, I guess. So now you can follow what's happening, like if you look at this little section here. 
uh, that you have put comments on now, so maybe it's hard to see. <laughs> I'll move it. <laughs> <laughs> But here you'll see the CV signals coming out of baseline generator and you can hear the difference in the bass sound where it moves the filter, it adds some noise, it adds a bit of the FM envelope and it changes the oscillator mix. You can unmute drums now. <laughs> I think uh, it is time to unmute drums. Yeah, I think so too. You get a much more kind of dynamic bass line by using those different signals. Right. Now this is the kind of thing, you know, when I when I listen to music, or certainly when I was learning, and I think even still to this day, I might hear a line like that and assume that it's multiple synths on multiple tracks. Right. You know, that noise is his own little accent track and... And maybe mm. there's a filter sound, and then there's the, the unfiltered sound. That's the distortion. power of modulation. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into another trick, because that's a cool bass line, but uh, someone asked before about shifting the pattern, which we generally think is a good idea, and we're a little bit sad we didn't get to it. Yeah, but there are plenty of ways around that. Some uh, do it a certain way, and some do it another way. And I'll, I'll show you a few, because I have an idea for the rest of this little track. So to, to make this 100% clear for people uh, watching, so one of the things people have said when using this is they they like the bass line, but they might like it the they like it to start on the fourth step of the bass line or the the fortieth step of the bass line to sort of recenter where it's sitting, um, right. and I think that's what you're talking about, right? A, a way to exactly. So just. Completely ignoring all the time we spent on getting the one right now. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of shifting things around. Right. Uh, but the good thing about players, I think, is that they're kind of building on each other. They're stackable. Uh, there's a bunch of nice things you can do. But I'm going to actually just copy this entire stack. I'm going to remove this CV thing, which I don't think I need. So now it's just the, the very same bass line uh, with the very same bass sound, but without the modulation. Uh, okay, I guess. Here I think it's fun to use a bunch of things, but Note Echo has kind of sailed up as a real hit in the office when we've tried this. Because what you can do is basically shift the note line. So in this case I'll tempo sync, and this means that every little echo of this bass line will be, you know, in sync with the song, a quarter note in this case. Right. Uh, and I won't pitch it. So it will be the same pitch, and I'll just repeat it once. Uh, if you didn't know, in all these repeats in Notech, you can actually turn them off and on, which is pretty nice to get rhythmic delays. Right. Uh, you can do that with the dry signal too, so to speak. So now it's basically just shifted uh, a quarter note in time. Because that's uh, the, the step length setting you have. Exactly. So it says, uh, let's see if you can see on the screen. Yes, you can. So now if I play this, you'll just have the same bass line delayed, with almost the same sound. Which is just messy, because it's the same sound. But imagine, if you will, <laughs> that you raise it an octave, and you change this sound to something else. That I prepared, because I'm like a chef. <laughs> uh, and now you'll get this call and response thing from, you know, the same bass line being played at so different just, So uh, up above, you've got the original, octaves. the bass we were working with is still happening. Yep. And then down Very below, we're, we're working on a copy. Uh, okay, and yep. I don't even have to change it an octave here. I can actually, funnily enough, change it an octave in the note echo, in case. But it doesn't really matter, <laughs> either or. But you get this uh, call and response kind of rhythm. <laughs> Hear it kind of triggering off each other. Right. Yeah. And this, of course, gets more fun if you add a little bit of effects. So I'll quickly add some reverb and some delay from my sense here. Film score and warm echo. <laughs> yep. Classics. Oh, okay. So here you're getting this kind of interplay between them, right? 
very and then of course you yeah. could go in and, and change some of these let, let's say you want to kind of change the rhythm around a bit and say, say this go up to a, a G maybe and this one kind of goes up to a, a high C here and a, a tip if you didn't know shift means you get a, a better uh, control over the, the, the pitch display oh when so you're you moving really moving of, the notes yeah, so you can do it so really you get a slowly more like granular and, resolution on your mouse yeah, basically find exactly what you want right? cool I love this being uh, being up in this octave, you know. So, I, I, one of the first things I actually did when I started playing with Baseline Generator was making lines that weren't bass at all. I was just moving the octaves up, and it really became like riff generator, hook generator. Right. You know? um, right. It had a lot of really. So now we just. Uh, I think that's the key first, like changing the octave, and then I think just doing a little bit more. And it yeah, more and, and also the right? thing you've done with the effects, too. I think that's something I noticed, too, is that if you left it pretty raw, it just sounded like, oh, why is that bass playing so high? But once mm, you add yeah, some delay yeah. and some effects, it suddenly becomes like yeah. <laughs> a cool thing. Was that your Getting cat? A, a, yes, he's uh, well aware that things are happening. Now. <laughs> but let's listen to the music and not him. So I kind of started with the same bass line, but now it's playing a bit differently, right? Back with some drums. Right. Uh, another thing that I found really interesting, like this note echo trick is nice uh, for shifting, uh, but one of my real favorites right now is still the pattern mutator. Oh, here's a cat. <laughs> well, he's jumping cat. your lap. Yep, he, he turned on the music again. I'm sorry about that. Oh, oh that was he's, him. He's very friendly. He just wants to say hi. All right, wait, wait, we, we got to, for, for your cat, we got to go full screen. Look Hello, at cat. this guy. What a weirdo. Well, he just said, uh, <laughs> someone, in, someone, in, someone just became a father during this video. What? He says, look, Evinas, I got son. My wife have birth during this video. No. Wow, we've oh. been part of something great. Really? Wow. Born into a world where he will only know baseline generator. Base. Yes. So, so <laughs> please turn off this stream now. If he does. <laughs> wow. That is. Uh, congratulations. Very um, nice. So. That's yeah. cool. Okay. He uh, says now we've got, of course, of course. Now we've just got uh, cat. Okay. Cat comments yeah. flooding in. Oh, <laughs> perfect circus podcast. That cat is hella ugly. You. Yeah, he's my new enemy. You the know. Perfect circus podcast. Whatever you want, you won't get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to show you a little bit about just pattern mutator in combination with baseline generator, I think that's a, a really fun combo. Okay. You can do a lot of of stuff. So okay, I'm, I'm just gonna give a little yeah, equal more, more equal animal. screen time to the other pet here. Ludwig, what do yeah. you got there? Oh, there you go. Got a tiny, tiny dog. <laughs> yes. What's the, what, what name are we referring to this Freddy. dog as? Freddy. Freddy. Fab Five Freddy. <laughs> there you go. No, it's actually, it's Freddy Mercury. Oh, but, right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> didn't you see? I, I, oh, I, I can't believe I didn't catch the resemblance there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Matthias, sorry. I got sucked into pets on screen. Uh, you go sure ahead. Go ahead. Sorry go about ahead. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, I just wanted to, to show that... Um, one cool thing that with pattern mutator in combination with this is that you can kind of capture ideas. So like baseline generator is very much built, you know, you do patterns and you find a nice one and you sequence it. And if you do a variation, you kind of go in and copy that to another pattern and do some variations. And so it's, it's not really thought as a, as a real time thing like that. It's more finding a nice baseline. Right. Uh, but one thing you can do is uh, shove a pattern mutator in between. So if I just have this. on this pattern mutator and just record this. And now I have this recorded version, I'll just turn this off, of what I just played. You might notice that it's not recording the, the glides, the, 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 what do you call it, the overlapping notes. Yes. Uh, that's that's a little bit of a of a design thing with how pattern mutator works. It just looks at which note is coming in. Right. Okay. Uh, and maybe we could change that. But the key thing is kind of getting the the actual note data. 
because what I want to do is take this and do you know some effortless variations of the very same thing. So I can turn on some swap and density and octave, and this all kind of throws throws things around, right? <laughs> But even if we go back, someone asked about shifting and, and lower length. This can very much do just that, right? So you can oh, put down see. the length here, right? And go, I'm gonna go 10 steps. And now you've set up a, a polyrhythmic. Yeah. You can kind of keep taking whatever raw material you had, right? And another nice thing is, even if you go up to the, the length we can have, this one can also shift, so you can go, hmm. Okay, so okay. this is another method of pattern offset. Yeah, exactly. Pattern offset. Yeah, it's another, there, there are several methods, like the most, the, the, some of the easiest methods involve, of course, getting the stuff down to the, the recent sequencer, right? And just moving. <laughs> sure, automating the pattern. Uh, but I, I really it. like stacking uh, players like this. Right. And there's been so, some discussion about um, basically why there's no scale setting uh, on the baseline generator. Scale setting, not, a, you don't mean note range, because that's a form of scaling the yeah, notes. But you yeah, mean, no, rather, rather like a C minor. Right, okay, D smart major. scales and stuff. Right. Notes, Keeping yeah. the notes in a certain scale. Yeah, yeah. why, restricting the notes why the is that? I think it's, it's worth talking about that, because there, there's a couple of reasons. Well, first and foremost, I think it, this builds from... Uh, baseline material and and as much as the rhythm is important the pitch is important mm. uh, like if you do i'm gonna have to get something to play on her here at center and maybe remove some of the excessive <laughs> delay <laughs> <laughs> so many of these like bass lines they wouldn't sound the same if you restricted them to scale and part of their character is that they have certain notes that are like going through. So you can have something right. like that, right? This, they this have goes these back to the non scale notes. This goes back to the, the notion that Ludwig sort of came at early on in his development process, which is that bass is not, um, it, it, it breaks rules. And over the years, a bassist learns when and how to break those rules. And one of them is or, mm -hmm. or non diatonic. So there's a little bit of that. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, like the, the things that sound the most good <laughs> or the most useful in the most types of music tend to have a very restricted uh, number of notes and, and a very similar number of notes. And for the music we kind of looked at and, and aimed for, there's a lot of electronic music, a lot of hip hop, a lot of funk, a lot of that kind of stuff. Right. It, it, they had bass lines and not functional bass. So it was really this important is... to make sure that that was the center of attention. This is something that, that mean I, we, we can't add it, of course, but that's kind of what's the thinking. I, I don't know if people out there are watching this or not, but but during the pandemic, a very very famous uh, session bassist for years named Leland Sklar, or Lee Sklar, mm. um, he started putting out videos, on I think on a daily basis, where he would play through. I mean, he's played on so many songs, and so he would just be like, "Okay, here's this, you know, Doctor My Eyes with uh, Jackson Brown. Okay, here's this James Taylor. Here's a Linda Ronstadt. Like whatever he, you know, Genesis. I mean, he's done a million things, and he will do these playthroughs where he plays the line that he played on those famous recordings. And one thing I was struck by was how restrained he is in his note choice, because of course he's got the chops to play the wildest, craziest stuff." But you watch him sitting in on these tracks, and he's playing roots and fifths and octaves, and you know the occasional fourth and and flat seventh, and like they're they're really mm. pretty. Yeah, like you say, it's a restrained set of choices that that he's making yeah. on all these songs, and it's it was so, fascinating. So what to we see. thought was we really wanted the baseline generator's core kind of promise to be that that the baselines are are immediately kind of usable and sound good and something you kind of build from or add as a groove right right uh, and since we have scales and chords built into reason that was part of the reason why we didn't add it too it's like because it's, it's really quite close to just go um but okay i'll do it in c major instead I mean, and in this case it doesn't even matter right because no. it's all fifths and quarters yeah right right 
which kind of makes yeah, kind of my point. The, the, <laughs> the thing to kind of clarify, what happens is if you have a bass line that are, have a few intervals, like something, or something, uh, that sounds fair enough when you're playing in, in C minor or C Dorian or whatever you are right now. But then if you want to add a chord change to that, so we change it, so we play it this. You want to go down. Yeah. And then suddenly it sounds. And it sounds like an old, I don't know, it doesn't sound like an harmonic pop. You don't stay in the scale. Mm. You suddenly move outside your scale. Mm. So, and that can of course become a problem. And there, but the thing is that Either you can just add a, a scales and chords like Matthias just did, so you and force <laughs> it to stay in the scale. You, mean, you can still play a cha change the root note, but the notes coming out will stay in that particular group of notes that that is a scale. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, okay, this type of music might not work very well with that type of of bass line. For example, because if you just if you restrict your bass line to something that only plays the root notes. Which is not uncommon at all. You can play. Some That's only the root note, and now you can suddenly move it around any way you want. Or whatever. And it won't go outside whatever scale you are in, you're playing in. That, right. So that works well. And to help with that, there are two things you can do to get to that if that's what you want is either you can load a patch we have several patches that I only play the root note could maybe you maybe you could try it's one called root note only because that illustrates another interesting that is thing. a very illustrative name yes it is so okay so it only plays yep. a single note but it has a rhythm of uh, some kind of rhythm the thing mm. is as you can see the manual pitch light is on down to the right. Now right, kind of, I'm you, zoomed in on it. I don't see it now mm -hmm. because it kind of disappeared from screen. Yeah, you you haven't far. zoomed in on it, right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, wait, oh, this one, oh, that, that's what you're talking about. Right, yes. right, <laughs> yes. that's on. And that, that means pitch stays as it is in the sequence, that is manual, you, it won't be affected what, what, by whatever you do up there in the, with the settings. Uh, the, the pitch is going to stay timing. flat at all times. Right. Or it's going to say it whatever you put it to, right, yeah. Yeah, in this exactly. case, flat. But you can still move the try try moving the diamond shapes around that, uh, selecting different on bits and off bits. So the rhythm will change. So you can still use it to to find whatever you like in in terms of rhythm. But you will right, ensure right. that you're still you playing the root note only. And it's this is of course. This is, of course, good if you uh, have a keyboard in front of you, like I happen to have right now. So let's say we have this pattern. Uh, you have, uh, you can see here, MIDI to pitch and MIDI to velocity, means that uh, you're controlling whatever the root note of uh, this thing is uh, by playing keyboard. your keyboard. Hmm. Yeah. So that's a way to just restrict it to whatever you right, want. Right, so it's it's just by using doing root notes here, right? And so you're controlling what that root is root note is on your keyboard. You're playing yeah, the, the melodic playing contour. You can, you can see and it's this playing little, the rhythmic uh, contour. Yeah, you can see this root note uh, uh, section here where it's C two as, as to start, and then I have uh, pitch MIDI pitch here and triggered by sequencer. You can have it triggered ex only by key too. So only by holding down the key do you play it which is really nice if you want to do, you know, just play with nothing in particular, you know, start and end point isn't that important. It just starts when you start playing, so. Another way to do it, shifting patterns, because you decide where yeah. they start. 
Oh, right. Exactly. I don't have to They're start on the one, right? right? Right. There was actually, so I'm going to scroll back up. There's a question. Gustavo asked a uh, question that I think we've talked about, but he says, is it possible to offset the anchor, meaning the whole set of dots, the nth step in any yeah. direction? So we've talked about that, Gustavo. A few. There's a few, there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. No offense to your cat there, uh, Matthias. <laughs> Um, but um, he's all skin. You don't you don't have to skin him. He's all skin. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but um, the the yeah, there's there's a lot of solutions. And if you back up about probably 20 minutes, we cover a couple of them. There's a way to do it with Node Echo. Mm. There's a way to do it with Pattern Mutator. There's a way, obviously, to do it in the sequencer if you actually just write the pattern into yep. the sequencer and yep. offset it. And now there's a way you could do it using this trigger method as well and manually yeah, just by, triggering. The I'll offset. show it by just doing a precon so you can hear me starting late, right? <laughs> So it's a way to just kind of right. start it whenever you want. Start right? it whenever you want to, right. I saw an interesting, uh, interesting comment in the, in the chat from, from a Joe. I love playing with these toys, but when I'm doing actual music production, I usually fall back on just playing the music in myself. I think that's kind of what we're trying to help with, with players. Uh, it's a lot of, when, when you fall back, I think this is really interesting. When you fall back, you tend to do something similarly. Because you yes. have a set of skills and you right. have a, 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 some knowledge. Like It's like uh, whenever I do demos with Ryan, I play everything in C minor. Because that's the first key I, I learned that sounded good. C major was shit, so I learned C minor and kind of <laughs> stayed there when I was a kid. right? And you tend to end up there right, with, with your regular thing. Oh, I add the side chain like this and I take this sound. Part of why we do players is not to replace you, but rather to give you a different entry point. Right. Go, hey, I wouldn't have thought of this rhythm, or I, I wouldn't have maybe you know thought of these pitches. I'll play my own rhythm, but it got me some inspiration. Maybe you even get a bass line, build an entire song from it, and remove the bass line and mm. add another one, right? But it's a lot of getting to that idea and getting to the idea like, in a different way, I think. Right. Part part of why why we like players so much is that, sure, you can make an entire song and just kind of let the players do the work, but they bring you to some new ideas. I think right. that's really key. You know, in a exactly. so in, in a weird, this is in, in a in a sort of very philosophical producer sort of way. As we have all moved in the box and into home production, and sort of, we have these amazing tools that are capable of letting us do everything. And if you go back. I, even 30 years, you needed other people to do things. If you needed bass on something, you needed a bassist to do it. If you needed drums, you needed a drummer to play it. And um, what we lost in the shift to being able to do everything is that it's your own input, your own artistic instincts that you're putting on the song, and you're losing the outside influence of someone mm. else kind of yeah, coming yeah. at it differently. On this particular player, it really does feel like I'm getting, in a weird way, Ludwig, I'm getting you to play and collaborate with me because you, <laughs> and, and, and Sean, you know, who contributed some bass lines as well. Um, you know, but I'm getting someone else's perspective on what a bass line yeah. can be. Mm. And, and it, it does, it, it's, not, it's not the same as true collaboration, but there is a collaborative element of knocking me out of my own routines. And yeah. I've really appreciated that when I've been And just to, to back up Joe, like, I... I took his comment as an example because I thought it was interesting, but he totally agrees. Like that's, that's what he thinks too, right? That it's, it's fun to play with this because you can get stuck in your, uh, in your things. So it's not like he's like, no, I don't like them just to be clear for Right, for right. So Gustavo <laughs> says, uh, as another workflow method, he says the baseline generator is a starting point for me. Then you send a track and tweak to whatever you need. And that's a totally valid yeah. way to do it as well, you know? That you can yeah. and I, I think that's that's something I want to kind of show off too is that e everything's a starting point in many ways so let's take this little track that I've been kind of abusing that's still pretty basic I want to use this for something completely different just to show that that can be done so I'll add in a baseline generator and and answer one of the questions in the chat to that why is there an ID8 when I put in the baseline Ex generator exactly good question uh, oh, yeah. exactly players are answer. always connected to instruments because they send MIDI data to an instrument. Uh, and if you drag it in without an instrument, uh, so there's no instrument to attach to, then we create one. An ID8 is just a simple one with... Early on, the, the, first, the first time when players were first released, 
we just didn't let you drag a player in unless there was an already an instrument there. And that right, was almost weirder because an instrument. people would want to start. They'd want to start by dragging in a player, and they'd be like, "Why is it not exactly. working?" Exactly. So, so you get some yeah. sounds to start with, and you can just. The, the sweet thing about reason here is that you can actually take another instrument or another patch or whatever and just drop yeah. it on top of the exactly idea. Exactly what I was going to do. It. I'm going to go and find some kind of. This is a. I'm going to find the, some pluck, cross browsing thing. Patch. Is actually a very very kind of overlooked so feature. I'll just try some some different plucks because why not. Uh, this cross-browsing thing where you have a device, you can just drag in any patch, whichever device might have made it. And see, whatever it is. Right. It's, you, you're not needing to think, oh, first I need to change to a combinator and then load the combinator. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Anyone who's followed our streams will know I'm partial to this patch. So I'll use it. But this is just uh, to show you that uh, you can use baseline generator for whatever, really. Anyone so who's followed our the... streams as well, Matthias, will know that we've now entered Plucktown, which is a yes, very, we're now in Plucktown. <laughs> very popular destination. <laughs> yes. But if you just uh, try some different patterns here, I'm not going to listen to the baseline quite yet, but... Let's take the velocity and make sure that really affects this. So now all the high velocity notes, the blue ones, will kind of increase the fold amount here. That's the airy, the, the airy sound is coming from the high velocity? Yeah, exactly. So without, it's just sine waves. <laughs> it, can, it can be a little bit boring. Bomb, bomb Toy says, it's sign of the times again. He's on to you, Matthias. Yep. Uh, but this is just to showcase that kind of this might even work because the, the root note is C2 and there's a lot of minorness in the different things, but let's see. Sure, sure. We'll add another. But what I wanted to show is just another way of stacking players here. So uh, I can use a scale and chord to restrict it to whatever I want. So C minor, but I can of course also remove some notes side out of C minor if I wanted to. And I'm going to use this to generate some chords too. Ooh. Uh, so I'll do some open chords here. <laughs> One thing you quickly learn is that less is more. So I'm just going to do two notes. Good enough, uh, and I think you can keep on doing this for quite a while. This is just showing you what happens with players. So I'll use one of the aforementioned note echoes, set up a little delay, and maybe just repeat once and pitch that up, maybe an octave, see what happens. That ain't your that, grandma's that baseline. Yeah, exactly. So we're pretty far from a baseline generator. <laughs> and my favorite thing about this is, of course, yeah, that was a cool thing we came up with. This is a big stack. Of course, I can send this to track now and just be done with it and go, I'll, I'll do stuff later. I can also, of course, record it in Pattern Mutator, because why not? So now I have this loop that, where I can even remove all of these players. <laughs> That's a pretty good rhythm. Yeah, there, go, oh, good. I was going to tell you to filter it, good. Michael wants to hear this going through an alligator. Can we uh, indulge him? Sure. But then I need to add some shuffle to the bass line too. Oh, just take the shuffle off the alligator. And both work. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, you kind of get my point. Uh, I wanted to really show that the, one of the fun things when you have all these players together is that like from a baseline you can end up somewhere else and vice versa. If you start with, uh, you know, on scales and chords and then you go, and, uh, okay, I've restricted it, but now I'll have that feed pattern mutator and then I'll add a baseline generator. Oh, that becomes super weird. Maybe right. that's cool. Export, you know. That kind of building block mentality, I, I think, is really fun. And, and that's like, you know, to just to jump back to our previous conversation, like that line is not something you would ever, to go back to that idea of like, okay, when, I really, yeah, when it really right. counts, I'm going to play it myself. It's like, well, you wouldn't mm -hmm. have played that. You wouldn't play something yeah. close to that. I, I would you know? never, ever play this. Just the octave jumps is, is uh, too fast and too much for my poor hands, right? <laughs> right. And right. now if I like this, I just save that to a pattern and maybe I mutate it again. And then I start all over again, add a baseline generator and, you know, Try something else. What about these vibe things? I'm just going to answer a question here. Um, Julian asks, why not release base generator, baseline generator means, as a VST plugin so we can use it in any DAW? Um, the the official answer to that is it is available in any DAW. Reason runs as a plugin. <laughs> right. In any DAW, uh, the Reason Rack plugin is a plugin. It, it's AU, it's VST, it's AAX. It runs in any DAW. Um, I yeah. think maybe what is behind his question is why not make it a dedicated singular VST? Mm. And that's because we like we like the sum total of Reason. What you've seen Matthias do here of putting scales and chords and node echo and, and alligator underneath Europa and creating this whole sound. That's that's what. The creativity reason is all about it. It's the sum total of all of its parts, and yeah, so there, there's a lot of of that thinking. I think like the rack, is is just great for doing that kind of quick add-on experimentation kind of thing. But it's important to note that it doesn't only work inside the rack as a player. Like you can send it as MIDI out to Ableton Live or Logic right. So or, you could you know, right. You could hook this you. baseline generator up to uh, an Arturia synth if you wanted to yeah right right, right. exactly I've, I've done it with hardware too which is really fun in the studio where yeah I've just that's you know, take a baseline generator to do a novation base station or, or yeah, when you when you did that cool i saw synth. the ig story where you did that where you, was that um how are you getting out you're just going out midi out into midi in on the hardware or is it yeah it's basically just using a midi out device instead of another instrument then choose whichever output. I only have a key step connected, but <laughs> right. whichever MIDI output is available, uh, send it. You go to your MIDI interface and, and you audio back. Your... Right, yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. Exactly. That's actually one of the, the cooler things with, with players, if you happen to be a big hardware user, is they basically add sequencers to all your gear, which is really, really kind of fun. Because a lot of these old analog style synths, they didn't have a, a piano roll with you know, hundreds of notes and infinite time. That's right. not how you sequence synthesizers, right? So you get a very different result from just having this 16-step thing. Right. But uh, can it really be today be 504 in an epic slap bass back Yeah, then. I saw that. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is the question. That I is the question. I don't think so. Probably not. I think, I would I think say it can try. I would say no. Can <laughs> <laughs> go out on the and say no. <laughs> or maybe it turns into one of those crossroads things when it plays lots and lots of notes and the baseline generator just like plays the, yeah. the essence of blues I'm gonna or try or whatever. Ever mm. so, like, can I can I do? Let's see. I'm gonna attempt special effect here. Can it slap? There we go. There's the old baby. <laughs> <five>. Slap. <laughs> All right. That's my well best quick attempt at uh, doing a Davy 504. <laughs> um, well, guys, it is. Uh, I do believe that it is uh, nighttime over in Sweden. And coming up uh, yes, it is. midday over here in California, I think it is uh, time for us to, to maybe wrap up a little bit here. Um, anybody, we're, I'm just going to just, we're going to throw out some final thoughts here, but I'm just going to give it to the audience. Throw out your, your last final questions if you got them or comments, and we'll throw them up on uh, screen here. But, um, oh, here, well, here's one to, to correct. Why is this not in Reason 12 and just in Reason Plus? It's not only in Reason Plus, uh, Alan. It's uh, it's not standard in Reason Twelve. It's an add-on uh, available in our shop, but it's not uh, not only in Reason Plus. So, 
But of course, if you are Reason Plus subscribed, you you do get it. It's part of. It just comes with that's that's sort of the uh, the promise of Reason Plus that you just get all the stuff and the latest stuff as it comes out. But you can certainly, if you have Reason Plus and you want to add this, you can definitely do that. So um, let's see. Oh, here's uh, Paul said that he was uh, I was sending baseline uh, generator signal out to my Mini Nova this afternoon. So there you go. Uh, uh, Mini Nova. That I was, hope you liked what you were getting. Classic one. I just before we came on, just for the audience, uh, just before we came on. Matthias and Ludwig were lamenting that they found out that uh, the uh, ARP 2600 is back ordered now, so your hardware dreams are going to have to. Or not back. Yep. What do you call it? Not back ordered, really. It's like. I guess it, back -ordered. It, it, is it back ordered? They, they can't make them fast enough. Chip, but it's like it's part of the whole mm. chip shortage, right? Is that. Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's part of the global just supply chain. I, it, I'm happy we're not doing hardware right now. It feels like every single oh, thing. Oh, man, I know. It, it I can know. hardly be shipped uh, around the world, and if it could, you don't have the parts to build it anyway. So uh, here's a question. Just uh, scale setting, please, final thought. Maybe this is worth <laughs> saying. So I, we've talked about some features that are not on Baseline Generator. I'm going to put you guys on the spot and sort of ask you, are these things that may come in an update or not? Uh, and I'll throw them out. The, the big uh, asks are... A scale setting, a pattern offset, and I think there's another one too, wasn't there? Maybe I'm forgetting a third one. I have lots of others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we thought about this quite a bit. We I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. Uh, uh, whether it comes or not, whether we will do an update or not, that oh, it was kind of depends. Less on. than 16 steps. That was the other one. That's the yeah. third one. I mean, uh, uh, anything's possible. Uh, there's no like immediate, yes, we're going to do that uh, next week, and that's our Christmas plans. Uh, but all this feedback is, of course, super good. And the really important thing, I think, when we're thinking about what we could add and not is to not kind of make the device uh, uh, too complex or compromised. So, it, like, it does too much. Right. I think I, I saw one request, for example, that I thought was interesting to comment on was that uh, they wanted to be able to record into the sequencer of baseline generator. Uh, which, which to me, I think that's a that's a thing I can say for certain that won't be added, right? Because the purpose right. of the device is kind of to generate some starting material for you and for you to then edit it. Right. If you would use it as just a that'd a be recorder. baseline baseline retainer or baseline yeah. Vessel. yeah just <laughs> missing it, it's worth there are pointing some... out that we we like uh, we want our players and all our devices to have their own specific character and uh, purpose yeah. and and so on. It would be possible to create a device containing almost everything, but but that's not, you know, that kind of robs the device from its personality. Plus, of course, it kind of robs us from the any future plans of making more devices because yeah. everything is already done. If you know what I mean. So, we, and you'll we, see if you like look at the the history of gear, you'll you'll often find that the things that become legendary and survive and good and that people love are not the things that try to have every feature. You don't hear amazing tales of those early workstations that had all the sounds <laughs> and could record an entire song, right? Right. No, you, right. Hear, you hear about the SH-101. That was right. the simplest. TB-303, you know, which, which, which its yeah. initial reception was like, what the hell do I do with this? And then yeah. a couple and, of acid producers thought, even guitar oh, you, pedals, you, you don't, you don't right. hear about the multi-effects pedals with every possible effect. Right, you the distortion delay own, reverb compressor. Yeah, like Boss you. DS1, <laughs> just, right. you know, the most basic <laughs> distortion. Because they tend to, to breed some kind of a creativity. Uh, like, right. it's the opposite of... Re people could think that having less features restricts creativity. Right, that's, I see a comment here. Why restrict creativity? And it's actually, it really is the opposite. The, the, the metaphor I always think about, for whatever reason, is uh, holding your thumb on the garden hose, where you, when you, sometimes when you restrict for things, and this is true for the way my creative brain works, sometimes restrictions actually create, you know, these outlets of increased creativity rather than... Mm. Uh, the other way around. But, so that's certainly. But true. it's not only about restrictions. We don't want to kind no, of no, remove no, no. stuff. Yeah, we it, don't remove things on purpose. I mean, just to make them smaller. When you right? mention like a, a Boss DS1, iconic, very very simple guitar mm. pedal, but it has some kind of character or almost personality. It's like, and and since we, I mean, Reason's whole brand, the whole idea, of Reason, is to rack with the devices where each device is kind of special. Our right. devices don't look exactly the same. They have different kinds of looks and different, mm. I, almost as if they were made, you know, had come from different whole parts of the world or whatever. But so, right. and that kind of plays into this. We want each thing to have its own flavor. Yeah. 
There's a reason why, why we almost never do, you know, uh, and this is a straight copy of this thing, right? Like like the company started was like that, right? With the 3038. Right. With Rebirth, right, right. right. Rebirth, which quickly became like, okay, and we did that. And any, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And anyone else could do the very same thing, and many people did. Uh, what's really hard to do is, you know, do something that feels like its own instrument. Right, its own interesting right. Thing that hopefully has its own legacy 20, years. Well, in that, in that regard, right? Hank says that uh, this player really brings the platform to a whole new level of creativity, so I think that's... Uh, that's cool uh, I'm hear. glad it's working for you, Hank. Well, I agree with great. you. Fantastic. Uh, another a question from Rudy. I missed the whole demo. Will this be uploaded to your channel? Yes, it will, Rudy, so worry not. Uh, in fact, as soon as I hit the end broadcast button, you can, well, you can even jump back right now and start from the beginning, but... Uh, it's going to be archived uh, absolutely on our channel. Um, a couple of times people have been asking, um, in fact, sometimes multiple times, uh, will this come to iOS? Will it come to iOS? Will this come to iOS? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> for Len's times. sake, um, you want to answer three times? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'd probably not. I'd <laughs> we, we have no, no immediate plans for no any, plans, any right. more mobile development. No. Right. Um, Cool. I'm just scanning here to see if there's anything else that uh, we need to handle. Um, oh, c breaking news. Evan says his son, who was born uh, during this live stream, will be named Thor, because I love reason. Um, excellent. I would it's like also to quite a normal name. He could be called Scream 4, and that would be pretty strange. <laughs> right. That's right. Scream 4 Dr. Mimic Octorex. Evan S. That's not a good name. But it, I mean, that's obviously like a super villain, so... I would like to uh, just uh, float out there, Evanus, that uh, middle name is still open. So I, Ryan, Matthias, or Ludwig, I mean, I don't want you to have to play favorites, but, uh, you know, you, just yeah. saying. I think, uh, and maybe also, also talk to your partner there before. <laughs> yes, maybe also do that. <laughs> maybe first do that. <laughs> What does New Seed button does? Oh, of does? course, New Seed. Oh, that's a great question, because I don't know the answer. What does that do, guys? All oh, right, ah, I can answer, answer that. You Who's, saw yep. the CV outputs on the back earlier in Matthias' demos. And CV I have it here. In ran front. The random CV outputs. That, so you can get a random um, like CV track going along with your baseline. And pressing new seed on the front just generates a new one. If you don't find that, oh, this particular random wasn't very good, uh, click new hmm. seed and then you get a new yeah. random. I can, I can show that you, super quickly. I, I'll show two things in one. We haven't mentioned the randomized so. button. The randomized button. <gasps> yeah, I'll, I'll show both, exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you, you can see down here, you, you'll see that channel three and four on this little scope, they will uh, play a random CV curve. <laughs> If you kind of follow it along here, if I click new seed, it will change the shape of this curve pretty much. So Some it's kind a of random, it's under, a random but places. repeating curve. Is that correct? It's random, random, say, random but repeating. Yeah, yeah and they random but repeating. So it's, it's the length with of each the note sequence. as well. It, so, yeah. so there won't be one random value for each step, but for each step there's a new note on That's interesting. Even exactly. without anything else the baseline generator does, that's interesting because sometimes I'll use the random waveform in like Pulsar, for example, but it's always mm. random. It's forever random. And so right, you, right, right. And there's times I wish that it were repeating. So that's really a neat... Yeah. Yeah. So that's what that does. And uh, something we didn't touch on at all is the randomize button, where it basically randomized the entire pattern generation here. Pretty good, actually. Yeah. Let's try a few more times just to play this out. Uh, a bit boring. I'll tell you what, Matthias. That that's a good one, actually. <laughs> I like this. This is such a Matthias song already. I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna do. Jam out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have you play us out. So just jam out. Generate randoms or modify your patch. Do whatever you're gonna do. I'm gonna pull you down just a little bit here. And uh, just that. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna just talk to everybody and say some quick goodbyes. I'm gonna leave you up on screen for a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull you off in a second here. But um, guys, hey, listen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out, for sticking around. If you joined us late, don't worry. This whole 
thing is being archived and you can watch it after the fact. Oh, I'm, I'm hearing new things come in. Now I just want to listen to it. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch this uh, after the fact, it's all going to be archived on our, our stream here. If you haven't checked out Baseline Generator yourself yet, there's a, a free trial for it. There's both a free trial for um, uh, Reason Plus. Am I correct in saying free trial or is a, a, a cheap sign up or something? There's, you can try Reason Plus as a whole, or you can try if you already got Reason 12 or Reason 11. You can try the normal shop trial of Baseline Generator as well. So check it out, see what it does for you. And, um, ooh, you're getting, I'm watching, I'm, I'm talking and I'm watching Matthias. He's throwing in synchronous. He's really going to town here. Um, if you guys do use Baseline Generator, send us, uh, send us stuff you're doing. We're watching everything people are doing and we're enjoying it quite a bit. And in fact, we're actually going to be posting some stuff. There's some examples. I just saw one today of a guy who made a, he took Baseline Generator, made a really great sort of like French disco you know, sort of Daft Punk, like the source records they were sampling sound, threw it in a mimic, juggled the slices, then put a bass line on top of it with baseline generator as well and created just a really, I mean, you're gonna, we're gonna post that on our channel. You're gonna see that soon. It's a really well done bass line and, well, actually two bass lines. So, you know, this whole production that he does using two two versions of the bass line from baseline generator. So listen, We'll be back with more of these, more streams, I mean. Uh, we're going to be doing some more in the new year as well, for certain. And we'll be back with just, you know, keep an eye on our channel. We're dropping stuff all the time now from myself, but from others as well, from you guys out in the Reason community. We're starting to reach out to you guys, and I'm sure you've seen some of the stuff from, like, Archetype and, and some of the other guys that we've been uh, featuring on our channel. I'm loving what we're doing. I'm loving what we're seeing there. So, oh, Peggy, Peggy, letting me know. $1 Reason Plus trial. Thank you, Peggy. That's what it is. Free to try, if you, free to try a Reason, as uh, a baseline generator, $1 trial for Reason Plus if you want to get all the stuff if you haven't tried Reason Plus yet. So there you go. And um, I think that's it for now. Let's all go make some music. I'm going to make some bass lines myself. That is actually on my agenda today for an upcoming project that I'm working on that you'll be seeing on our channel soon. I can't wait to do it. And... That's it. I hope you guys had fun. Thanks to Matthias and to Ludwig for hanging out with me. And thank you guys for hanging out with me. We'll see you soon.